As we move through 354 years of history, we're going to pass the gavel to these people that are coming up, and I think they deserve a well appreciated hand because they've got a lot of work to do to follow this show. The future of Bridgewater's government has been front and center over the past 30 months as a once broken community suffers through growing pains and strives to transition to a more efficient, financially sound status. The town government study committee spent two and a half years and 3,000 hours, according to its chairman, with the goal of finding a solution for Bridgewater. A majority of town voters jumped on board last April when they approved a new town manager, town council form of government, and they gave further support to Brighter Days after supporting a $2.8 million operational override in the spirit of seeking long-term recovery for Bridgewater. The unprecedented combination of a cash infusion and revamped form of government almost guaranteed positive change. But after the first quarter of 2011, some fear that Bridgewater's government appears to be featuring more of the same. There is no doubt that recent actions of town voters have led to positive consequences. The town's library, senior center, and recreation departments have all remained open for business and have returned to active roles in the community. Police and fire staffing has become more stable. The highway department has made it through a busy winter, and town departments remain operational. However, there is definite unrest at the highest levels of the town's government. Bridgewater voters had lost confidence in their leaders over the past few years, which partially resulted in the creation of the new charter, which called for more efficiency, transparency, and accountability. Newly elected councillors began meeting during the fall of 2010 to set objectives for their historic venture. According to an October 31st article in the Brockton Enterprise, most councillors agreed that the first order of business was earning credibility with residents who have become disheartened by Bridgewater's downturn. However, after three months, approximately 30 hours worth of meetings, there is doubt on any credibility being earned. Critics from both sides are pointing towards opposite ends of the spectrum, laying blame on the councillors or the town manager. The root of the problem centers on a disconnect between the two governing bodies, a conflict that has taken center stage during recent meetings. As another fiscal year quickly creeps up, the combined force of town leadership has a lot on its plate. But a majority of the marathon meetings continue to focus on who gets to do what, as opposed to anyone doing anything. And as a result, very little seems to be getting accomplished. Several council members have been at odds with town manager Troy Clarkson over recent decisions and agreements he has made, including the hiring of an attorney to give legal determination on the town's handling of the Whispering Woods property, the hiring of an economic development firm, which is studying potential impacts of allowing residences at a commercial development property, and his recent participation in a meeting with university officials and state representative D'Amelia, which discussed the return of annual financial gifts in lieu of resources provided to Bridgewater State. Councillors have expressed concern with their lack of involvement and lack of input with the decisions being made. Supporters of Mr. Clarkson have expressed concern over the board's micromanaging of the executive body. Just last month, supporters filled a memorial building to express appreciation for Mr. Clarkson's services, and those sentiments have been echoed throughout the town and region. Both sides have valid points, but so far have not reached common ground. The continued disagreements are not only costing voters patience, but they are now costing taxpayers money. During Tuesday night's meeting, councillors voted to hire the legal services of Copelman and Page, who is known for representing municipalities across the Commonwealth. That move is contingent on the public holding of a performance review for Mr. Clarkson. The deemed special legal services are also focused on providing protection to the town council, as it contemplates potential disciplinary actions for its employee. During their March meeting, the council voted in favor of allocating up to $10,000, and on Tuesday night, it was indicated that the $10,000 will be funded by the override dollars approved by taxpayers last spring. Just prior to the council's vote, Mr. Clarkson made an appeal for reconsideration and proposed that the council and town manager meet face-to-face -to, -face to iron out differences. A similar request was made by Councillor Pitta back in March to Mr. Clarkson when he urged the town manager to reconsider hiring legal representation but both parties have decided to hire counsel for future discussions. Now that the bickering has become a legal battle, members of the former town government study committee have weighed in on the issue. Um, Chairman Ed Ivaldi and members um, Sheila Whitaker and Bruce Langland signed an email that was forwarded to local media this week by an unidentified source, providing the committee's take on the charter while clarifying the definitions of responsibility amongst the town leaders. 
According to the document entitled Time to Move On, which was sent to all nine counselors, the town manager, and legal counsel, the study committee answers unequivocally that the ultimate decision-making responsibility lies with the town council. The email goes on to state that after three months into the new form of government, the general feedback in town has been less than favorable. The evidence from the council meetings and the stories in the media suggest that something is seriously wrong, and it's the citizens of Bridgewater who are suffering through this embarrassing and frustrating time. It is the opinion of the government study committee that councillors are the community's decision makers. Voters were presented with several PowerPoints over the past two years, which cited recommendations of the government study committee, whose charter would stream authority through a strong town manager. Some councillors have indicated that a strong town manager does not exist in the new charter, though a strong town manager and a single executive authority was referenced at 2009 and 2010 town meetings when presented to voters. Those presentations also supported a town council that would have the final call on all policy decisions. Policies and day-to-day -day operations also continue to be blurred, and so the battle continues. There is still much confusion and much debate to the new government structure, but one thing has been clearly defined. The ultimate authority lies with the voters and taxpayers of this community. I'm Jeff Fowler reporting for Bridgewater This Week.